Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Ball Watch Company with the Trainmaster Eternity in blue. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com. So in this video, deep dive on this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout this video, if you have any further questions, check out the link in the description down below where you can purchase the watch, learn more information about it, as well as book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. When I think of ball watches, I think about how they started here in my hometown of Cleveland, Ohio, and the important place in history they occupy when it comes to the development of railroad chronometers during the end of the 19th century. I also think about how the company has become one of the true value-driven Swiss brands since they've moved their operation over across the Atlantic Ocean, offering over-engineered timepieces, sporty case designs, and excellent everyday wearability when you look at many models within their collection. Of course, today they offer a wide range of models and styles, including some dressier executions, which is where we're headed in this video, as this is one of the more, I would say, refined models from the collection with the Trainmaster Eternity. So on the wrist here, we have a vintage inspired case design that measures at 39 and a half millimeters in diameter, a lug to lug distance of 45.9 millimeters and a reasonable thickness of 11.8 millimeters when factoring in the dome sapphire crystal. Right away, this is unlike most ball watches that we typically see in that it's much dressier in its overall execution and leans into some poignant vintage characteristics like say the Tissot Visodate as an example. With the thin bezel profile, flat case side surfaces, and an expansive dial, the Trainmaster Eternity wears true to its 39 and a half millimeter case size. However, it is going to be mostly dial. So visually and optically, it might throw some people off in terms of that dial to bezel ratio, but still in totality, 39 and a half to 40 millimeters is kind of how this one wears on the wrist. Situated at the case at three o'clock is a uniquely styled dome crown that appears larger than it really is. Coming in at just six millimeters in circumference, but appearing large in comparison to the case, especially at first glance. It's of the screw down variety, featuring a highly textured knurling to easily engage and operate the functions. Unscrew the crown into the first position where you can hand wind the movement, extend to the second position where you can adjust the day date function on the watch, and pulling the crown to the farthest pulled out point, you then can adjust the time while stopping the second hand in the process, so hacking seconds here. However, even with the screw down crown, the Trainmaster Eternity has a limited water resistance rating, which is probably the biggest bummer when it comes to this timepiece, only coming in at 30 meters, which is going to have more to do with the case back than the stem and crown system, which we can get into later. The Trainmaster leans into formal case design with the aforementioned flat case surfaces, a step bezel, and delicately beveled lugs, all exhibiting a polished finish. Contrasting that uniform polish aesthetic is a 20 millimeter bracelet, which exhibits a mix of large brushed outer and center links with thin polished intermediary links running vertically between the brushed anterior surfaces. The construction of the bracelet is quite good, feeling high quality to the touch and designed with creative flair, especially with the groove that runs horizontally through the center of each link. This design separates itself from the many other bracelets from Ball, as well as the other multi-link bracelets that are heavily influenced by the Oyster three-link bracelets or Jubilee bracelets, but this one features no really call or influence from those very discernible designs. Diving into the details a little bit further here, the finishing and attention to detail is very good across each bracelet element with polished side surfaces to the end links, plenty of sizing links, including half links, and a relatively small hidden butterfly clasp. Additionally, each link is secured to the bracelet with long screws that are seated internally, meaning that they don't go all the way through the series of links and are exposed through the other side. With the combination of the underside brush finish and the articulation of the links, you have a pretty nice wearing experience in the process here. Moving over to the front of the watch, we have a vintage inspired dome sapphire crystal protecting and providing a view of the dynamic blue dial within. With the way the dome crystal plateaus, there isn't so much of an obstructed view of the dial, but rather a slightly distorted one, especially along the edge of that dial. Further, the crystal also casts some interesting lighting effects to the sunburst texture, which take a bit of getting used to and why I referred to this as a dynamic blue. In addition to having this interesting visual presence, I must say, I don't think the official product images provided by Ball capture the characteristics I just described, nor do the photos capture the true color of the dial, which is a lighter, more muted color than represented in photos, which makes the dial out to be a deep navy blue that really isn't the case here. 
Where the dial really leans into the vintage looks though is with the slight curvature along the outboard edge, a look commonly associated with vintage mid 20th century designs. This curvature appears to be more dramatic due to the crystal, but in reality it's subtle. Along the outer edge of the dial, we have applied trapezoidal hour markers finding their place within a minute track printed in thin white hashes. Each marker contains one of Ball Watch's signature microgas tubes that run in concert with the minute track hashes. The polished surfaces of the applied markers pair perfectly with the hour and minute Dauphine hands as well as the thin curve sweep second hand. There is also a slight curve applied to the hour hand matching that of the second hand with both tracing the curvature of the dial which is perhaps the most vintage inspired aspect of the dial configuration. The other eye catching element of this is going to be the day date aperture which is aligned with the crown at the three o'clock. One thing that is a little bit drawing when looking at it though is going to be where it's positioned within the dial itself. It's going to be set a bit more inward than normal encroaching on the real estate of the hands at the center. The day date is bilingual coming in Spanish and English so you have both of those uh, settings at your disposal which is nice to see. Finally on the dial we have just a couple of places of text in typical locations. We have the full ball logo positioned under the 12 o'clock marker again printed in white and simply the word automatic above the six o'clock index. The only other text you'll find is the Swiss made reference which straddles the six o'clock index on either side in the T25 referring to the use of tritium gas which sits between the six and seven. Overall this is a much different packaging when it comes to the use of tritium as well as just the execution as a whole when it comes to looking at the large collection that Ball offers. Turning the watch over we have one of the more interesting case backs I think you'll find for the price point. It's an exhibition case back that's constructed from a single solid sapphire crystal that has two distinct levels. It's held inside a thin case back bezel which is secured to the case using recessed screws and as you move inward the crystal starts out flush with the bezel exposing a matte finish inner movement ring that is signed in two places with the Ball Watch Company logo. Then the crystal steps up which allows clearance for the RR1102 automatic movement inside. Now this movement is essentially an ETA 28362, operating at 4 hertz, 28,800 vibrations per hour and 38 hours for the power reserve in addition to having enhanced anti-magnetic along with anti-shock properties. You also have a classic regulating pin for simple regulation and servicing capabilities as well as hacking seconds to aid with precise time setting. In terms of finishing, the movement is a base tier having a utilitarian matte finish applied to the visible bridges and plates. Even the oscillating rotor is simple in its decoration. The Ball Watch logo is signed in gold lettering and there are some radial brush patterns applied but that is largely the extent to which this movement is decorated. In terms of serviceability and reliability it doesn't get much better than these standard ETA 28 series calibers. This one with that day date function and for accuracy of this particular version just to offer up some anecdotal evidence it was running six seconds off in perfect time of day when testing at five different positions. All right, so now to unpack looking at this Ball Trainmaster Eternity in blue. So when looking at this watch, it's a bit of an enigma in terms of where it is positioned within Ball's entire lineup. And I respect what they were going for with this design and trying to be a bit different. Although I feel it does fall short in some areas. I think it's a very nice looking watch, but I think part of it is almost forgotten some of the elements that make Ball Ball watches. With 30 meters of water resistance, I think that's just for the standard that Ball is typically at going to be a big issue for some people out there. Now, there are plenty of other watches out there on the market that are 30 meters of water resistance, but it just feels weird to say out loud a Ball watch with only 30 meters of water resistance. And the reason why I bring this up is if you look at some other models within Ball's collection, looking at some of their moon phase models, or say like the Fireman Enterprise, it does have some dressier undertones still. Those watches manage to still have some nice water resistance to oxygen occupy what is being delivered there and more of a conventional use of tritium compared to this. Wearability is pretty good on this one. I think this is going to be a pretty mass appealing watch. It has a large enough case to appeal to larger wristed individuals but it has a nice compact lug to lug to be a benefit to those on the smaller end. Reliable movement on the inside but I think this is going to maybe not be the choice for most people out there when looking at ball. If you want something that's out there a little bit different compared to the conventional dress options and you really enjoy what ball is delivering from a product standpoint which I think is well packaged here from a finishing standpoint and a build quality standpoint but it is going to be absent of some of the conventional tool watch characteristics that people have come to love from Ball. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel. Do appreciate that in the process as well. And also, if you're in the market for this watch, 
Check it out. It's available on TeddyBaldasar.com. TeddyBaldasar.com is a full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. Also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. We also offer price match. So if you see one of our products for cheaper at another authorized dealer, fill out the form and we'll be in touch with you. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into the content here, as well as on our main channel, trying to help foster a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.